Don't look at that. Nothing's going to happen on there. Yeah. <laughs> Football on, anything like that. Don't worry. Um, so thank you for having me here at Five Bar. Here in the uh, we're in Disbury, are we? Yeah. So I kind of came at it a different way. So I didn't feel like I was in Disbury, but we're near Burton Road. So I know Burton Road. Was um West Disbury was my dad's call it with him. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Sorry. There you go. There you go. So, yeah, so uh, Sarah's correct. My name is uh, Mark, Mark Jackson. You can call me Mark. I am a cartoonist. Uh, I, uh, for those of you who don't know what a cartoonist is, does anybody here not know what a cartoonist is? Does everybody know what a cartoonist is? Sir, so, what is a cartoonist? Cartoonist. In a strip. In a strip, yeah. So, it's a cartoonist, somebody who draws, draws cartoons. It's a basic. Um, uh, basic um, uh, level. Uh, some of you draws cartoons. Where you put those cartoons can be different places. You might be a cartoonist who's an animator. Um, you might be a cartoonist who um, does greeting cards, I suppose. You could even do something like that. Uh, somebody who maybe il uh, illustrates a book. But in my case, um, the most known are comic strips or comic books. Uh, these are some of my comic books here. I have a, a selection of them. Um, if anybody's interested in having a look at them, if anybody's interested. Buy one. I have a box full. You can buy one. You know, you buy some uh, for people who love comics. Uh, you will love comics by the end of this. Um, I am specialising in comics for all ages, so not necessarily just for children. But um, my mission was to get children reading more comics. Uh, I came back to this about fourteen years ago, after having a little bit of time away from um. Reading comics so much, uh, making comics. Uh, I just had a little bit of you know time doing other things in life, you know, as you do. And but but since I was young, uh, being a cartoonist was always what I wanted to be. And so I now uh, and I was actually at school today. Uh, I was at Manchester Grammar School today, uh, and um, we were talking about the fact that I was a cartoonist. And many years ago, when I was at school, and they would go around the class and ask, um, "What do you want to be?" Uh, when you uh, when you grow up, what do you want to do as your job? And obviously, somebody said a scientist. See, take away there into science talk. <laughs> somebody said a scientist, uh, and uh, and I said, and so I came around. I wasn't really that confident uh, about saying things in front of people back then, anyway. Um, and I said, I want to be a cartoonist. It sounds kind of goofy, uh, and some girls laughed. Okay, and I didn't say that out loud for quite some time after that uh, because I was like, okay, yeah, it just sounds a bit silly. I best not say that. But now. I get to be a cartoonist for my job, uh, and I say it as loud as possible, as many times as possible, because it's quite possible one of the greatest jobs you can have. I feel very fortunate to be able to write and draw comic books uh, for my for my job. I, I also uh, run a studio with my wife, Jane, in Macclesfield, where we live in Macclesfield, um, which is why I'm a little bit late tonight. Uh, it took a little while. Um, and um, called Room for Comics, which um, celebrates the teaching of comics and comic art to uh, primarily children and anyone who wants to come. We have an adult class sometimes and team building for business. We've had a few scientists, a few engineers through the door. Um, and uh, we also organize a comic art festival in Maxville, which is this weekend, okay? If you fancy doing something different this weekend, after my talk, you think, I want to be there, come to Maxville, because we've got this fantastic comic art festival. It's a, um, well, it's technically a, a three-day festival, uh, but the main day um, would be on the Saturday in Maxwell Town Hall. Uh, we fill the town hall full of people like me, lots of amazing creators. But our focus is on uh, comic art. Uh, a lot of comic cons, uh, comic conventions can be about uh, B-list celebrities and somebody who is dressed as a stormtrooper. Um, in the, as much as I love stormtroopers and I love Star Wars, a guy who was in a stormtrooper costume in A New Hope in 1977 shouldn't be charging £15 for an autograph. You don't even know what he looked like. Okay. So anyway, so that's so that's a, that version of a Comic Con, uh, but we have a Comic Art Festival, and that is this weekend. And uh, yeah, it's free to get in, and you can come and see. And if anybody, if you fancy coming to Macclesfield, braving Macclesfield for the weekend, uh, you'll be more than welcome. But I'm not here just to talk about my give me my promo. But I'm just giving you a little bit of background on myself. I'm here to talk about the science of comics. And um, some of you might be thinking, the science of comics, what on earth does that mean? Uh, and uh, when I um, blindly w uh, weighed into these things and suggest I can do uh, things like this, it came from uh, somebody in the Macclesfield sidebar. Um, I I'm on a message chain, that particular person, and uh, she's been let down by a speaker. 
so could anybody do a talk? And no one was forthcoming. And I just said, oh, I could do one sort of jokingly, but meaning it, but sort of jokingly, because I thought it should be like, well, that doesn't really fit. I said, I could do one on the science of comics. Uh, and she said, well, actually, that sounds like fun. What would that be about? I said, well, I don't really know. And I just from said it. Um, <laughs> And then I did it in January, and 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 it kind of worked because there is a science of comics. So, uh, yes, you're right. I haven't got it on the screen here. I the the irony of it is, is I actually do work when I make any of my finished comics. Captain Serial, superhero, lives inside a cereal box, all the out, and lives in a movie theater breakfast. Okay, uh, like if somebody's like smashing an avocado onto a piece of sourdough toast, like, and Duffy sh shut that down quickly. Yes, madam. Move this. Move this over here. Yeah, there you go. All right, okay. All right. So, are we all right there? Can everybody still see that? Okay. It's currently blank for those of you who are worried. Okay, don't panic. All right. Everybody's thinking, I still can't see it because there's nothing on it. All right, okay. So, don't panic. Uh, yeah, but the, uh, the the interesting thing is that we uh, I'm not brought a laptop um, and I'm not doing a digital presentation, but when I do make my finished comics, I work digitally. I have a, like a thing called a Cintiq, which is like a big iPad, and I draw digitally onto that. Uh, however, for this science talk, I've gone old school, uh, which is, uh, you know, I thought it was been more fun. So uh, I would like to ask you a question. What, my friends, is that? The, rec the rectangle? Was it, who said cheese? Somebody said you said cheese. Okay, I don't know the kind of cheese you eat, sir, but that's uh, you know, <laughs> you know, just just cheese. Okay, now this is the comics panel. Can we all see that? Okay, yeah, all right. This is a panel in a comic. Comics made up of panels. Does anybody here ever read a comic? Read comics? Oh, yeah, you read comics? Yeah, still read comics? Yeah, good man, what's your comic? Ooh, uh, too hard. <laughs> too hard. I don't know that one, sir. But, uh, no, too hard. Yeah. Hang on. Got a particular favorite creator? Uh, right, you're coming to Mac Power, you're on Saturday. Mac Field. Oh, 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 I would say, you know, you can, you, they, they work in sort of strips across. You mentioned before, comic strips work across. Uh, more often, not these days. I will ping around, so don't worry. Uh, or stick with me. Uh, uh, you have comic strips, which is like newspaper comics. One, two, three, four. Uh, okay, let's visualize that. Let's not just do it. Okay. So this is like a newspaper strip. You know, you've got your four like that. Okay. That's four, isn't it? Okay. We can get all count. Yeah? One, two, three, four. So your first panel, panel one, is where you start your comic. Okay. And panel four, where you end your comic. If it's a comic strip, you need to set up a situation that's hopefully kind of leading into something kind of funny going on in panel two and kind of carries on and then almost has towards being resolved in panel three. And then the grand finale is panel four, but not only is the whole story resolved, but it's funny as well. If you're doing comic strips, funny comic strips. Well, then uh, all comic strips weren't necessarily funny. You might have had, you might be familiar with Flash Gordon. Yeah, okay. Uh, there was Spider-Man comic strips in newspapers as well as comic books. And, um, and so not necessarily, Flash Gordon wasn't exactly a rib tickler, okay? But it still had where you would, the, the idea would be that um, each strip was kind of self-contained. So it wasn't like you felt like, it continued on, but it wasn't like you felt short changed. You're like, well, I've got to keep reading this. And then you, you kind of get a little mini adventure and you're like, okay, four panels and I'm done. Comic strips, they kind of, not, they, they sort that out. So we start, if that's the only one you ever read, then that's all right, okay? You've enjoyed it, you've, you've met the characters, you've seen what kind of things they get up to, and you've seen how it ends happily ever after, and you've hopefully had a little bit of a chuckle, all right? You might know comic strips like uh, Peanuts, Charlie Brown, Snoop, uh, Calvin and Hobbes, the greatest comic strip to ever be created, okay? Not just in my opinion, it's a fact, all right? By a cartoonist called Bill Watson, who did it for 15 years, and then famously retired when it was literally going like that. You didn't market, merchandise, anything. All right, there's no Calvin and Hobbes t-shirts, action figures, toys of any shape or form. He just kept it in the pure form of comics, uh, which is incredible uh, to, to do that. I don't know whether I uh, could be that strong, you know. Show me where you're going to make me an action figure of Captain Serial, and I'll sign that little, uh, little thing. All right, so yes, it's a comic strip. More uh, um, these days, are we all familiar with um, 
assuming you know you you know that we have these things called phones, iPhone, and Instagram. Okay, anybody on Instagram? Nobody's on Instagram. <laughs> Good Lord, hard crowd. Okay, right. Okay, are you familiar with Instagram? Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, it kind of works. It's a thing called Instagram. You take pictures, but Instagram is also a great place for sharing your work. So I use Instagram very actively to share what I'm working on, uh, to promote things, um, to uh, also put comics online. Okay, they're ideal because Instagram works with what is this? This is a square. Okay, it's not a perfect square. Well, who wants to draw perfect squares uh, when you can just draw them nice and fast? Okay, we don't worry about trying to get it all perfect because you can still recognize that's a square. So I don't need to break out my ruler and get it all perfect for you to recognize it. Okay, but that's the, so Instagram works on squares. So the great thing about squares, you can then do this and you can do that. And then suddenly you've got four squares. So you've got your comic strip inside a square. Or you can have a single square like that again. Okay, and then you can have a slide of other squares. So you draw one panel, so this could be the first panel, panel one. Then you could have another, draw another one, and you can swipe, you can swipe. Anybody ever swipe before? Okay, yeah, yeah. You might have done that on Tinder or something like that, I don't know. Uh, yeah. so you swipe, okay. Uh, and, and you can do a four panel comic that way. And so uh, Instagram has become really great for, for web comics. Web comics are basically comics that go, they're online. And um, the World Wide Web was created in... Yeah, come on. No, no, that's a I've stumped you already. All right, okay. The World, Wide was created, the World Wide Web was created sometime recently. Yeah, should we go <laughs> after, the, after World War II? We'll stay with that. All right, okay. Uh, and so, web comics were a great way of people putting, you know, they could do create comics and put them on, online. They would have to have websites and they would just upload them and stuff like that. Uh, but there are many famous web cartoonists who've gone on to have incredible careers. Who've got um, who now work in animation, and have TV shows because their comic uh, was picked up because primarily they might have had a little web comic, but they also had a little ad space around them, uh, and then started selling merchandise. Unlike Bill Watson, who created Calvin and Hobbes, uh, and they did sell merchandise and then made a small fortune just by making these little squares and putting them online every every week, regular stuff. But there was a famous one called American Elf. My cartoon is called James Kachalka. Uh, in fact, I actually, uh, so this is recently a comic that's just coming out this weekend um, for Goof. It's a new comic for kids that I've uh, edited and published and put together, and it's got a wealth of fantastic cartoons. In fact, James Kachalka, his work here, is, uh, and he did a comic called American Elf. Again, for 15 years. There's something in that, 15 years. Um, and it's a diary comic. The comics after you just be about crazy stuff, superheroes, um, they can be about political things. Uh, they can be about um, real life uh, struggles and problems. And um, he did a diary comic every single day for 15 years. He would put a four panel comic strip like this on his website, okay, about what was going on in his life. Uh, and it got to the point where things started to get a bit surreal. And in the end, he retired it because he felt that his life was imitating art and people were doing things around him uh, just to get in his comic and stuff like that. Uh, but he did it for 15 years, when he, whether he was ill. Or whether you know something had gone on in the family, there was a death in the family. He still did his comics to document his life for fifteen years. Um, so yes, these are kind of different kinds of comics, uh, a way to present comics uh, um, as comic strip. But this, let's go back to this now. This panel, this rectangle, is a panel in a comic book. So again, reference comic are made up of panels like this. You have multiple panels. This one here has about seven panels on each page. There's no real limit. It depends how much work you want to do. You know, you might want a 12 panel. There's a famous, there's a famous comic called Watchmen, okay, by uh, Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons. And um, that worked on a nine panel grid. So every single page is a nine panel grid. They might have a splash page. Anybody know what a splash page is? Yeah, go on, sir. Yeah. It's a full, uh, that's a double page splash. Yeah, okay. So a single page. So most, most comic books, you would open them up, first page, bam, it's one big picture. It's a splash. It's making a splash. It's making an impact. Uh, it would have the title. It would have this image. Uh, and then you would then follow on to the other pages. Um, and um, the Watchmen comics were made up of a nine-panel grid. So there were nine panels on each page. And that was a very structured comic. A lot of work. In fact, famously, Dave Gibbons, who is the cartoonist on that, uh, because you can be called a cartoonist, whether, whether you're doing cartoony comics or even more realistic comics. It's still cartoonists. 
Okay. Uh, Dave Gibbons famously had his uh, wife and children uh, lining in the, the lines of the panels uh, so he could just keep on top of the workload uh, because uh, comics take a long time to make. You know, there's a lot of work goes into it. So, yes, this is a comic panel. So, imagine one of our cartoons we've already, already mentioned. They're, they're looking at this. This is the start. And comics work in, in various different ways, but we kind of look at this panel and if you were um, dealing with like a Marvel comic, Marvel or DC, some of the comics like you know, you know, Spider-Man, you might know Batman, you might know Captain America, uh, you might know Plastic Man, there's a bit more of it, you know. Uh, and um, those comics were not just made by one person. There's a lot more people these days just making, doing the whole thing, all right? But back then, because it was a lot more of it, you know, the, 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 for the bigger, the big two, as they know, Marvel and DC, uh, it's, these comics are coming out monthly. Right, you've got twenty-four page comics coming out every single month. Okay, you've got famous cartoonists like Jack Kirby, Jack the King Kirby, or Steve Ditko, who co-created Spider-Man with Stan Lee. Okay, Stan Lee would have you <laughs> Stan Lee would have you believe that he he created everything. He didn't. Okay, he co-created so many of the characters you might know, characters you might have never seen in a comic because you've never read a comic, uh, but you might have seen a Marvel movie or at least be familiar. You know, people. Does anybody here never heard of Spider-Man? No, you've all heard of Spider-Man, okay? You didn't know Instagram, but you know Spider-Man. That's all right, okay? That's cool. And so the way that those comics would work is that um, they would use the Marvel comics. Stan Lee would use the things that was known as the Marvel method, all right? And the Marvel method was uh, basically Stan Lee would write a little, little synopsis, little plot, little outline about what was going to happen to Spider-Man that month, Okay. So Spider-Man, what's, what's the bad guy? I don't know. It's the Green Goblin. Green Goblin's going to come in. He's going to do this to this place. Uh, Spider-Man's going to have to stop him. But on, on the other side, you've got Spider-Man who, secret identity is Peter Parker. Okay. He also has an Aunt May who he looks after. Maybe something's going on with Aunt May or something like that. And she needs a pension collecting. I don't know, something like that. And so he's got these real life things going on as well. That's what made Marvel Comics uh, different than DC Comics because it was also the who was behind the, the, the costumes. Um and so we write this little outline. You go, right, there you go, Steve. I want you to draw that, okay? Steve would go off. He would then draw 24 pages of comics based just on that outline. And he would tell the story visual. Comics is very visual. It's all about what you can see. A great comic, you should be able to tell what's going on just by looking at it. It's a sequential form of artwork. Uh, and he would also know the rules of a panel, the science of a comic panel, all right? And he would know... This bit up here, I'm going to do this little dotted line. This is a place for him to not draw anything. All right. Stay out of here, Steve Ditko, Jack Kirby, John Buscema, uh, all these fans, Frank Miller, all these fantastic people, Hilary Barter, Marie Cohen. All right. Stay out of there. This is not your place. All right. This is where the words are going to go. So this, the bottom third, is where the bottom two thirds, should I say, um, of where the drawings would go. So he would draw, you know, he would get in something, I don't know what's going on. You've got some kind of thing, let's say Spider Man swinging in, and like this, right? He's swinging in. You've got some buildings down here, and this kind of thing. He's, he's got his hand, and he's like that, he's been like this with his wife. Okay, and he's swinging in, and then you've got some more buildings down here, maybe it's a big city like that. Okay, all right, and you've got the sun over some birds, okay, like that, all right? So he's swinging in, all right? We're all fine, okay? He, Steve would then go along and he would draw all these in every single panel, okay? Keeping out of here, right? Knowing that if he did anything up here, when it came to the lettering, okay, they would all fall apart, okay? Because what he would do then is he would draw the entire comic like this, keeping out of here, and then he would hand it back to Steve. There's a stamp. And Stan would then write the, the comic, write the dialogue based on then what he could see. So he'd started it, he'd passed it to Steve, and Steve's passing it back, and then he would write the story based on what he could see, all right? And that would mean putting in all the dialogue, writing the dialogue. And then he would hand that dialogue to a letterer. That was the person. So if you've ever seen any comics, you might be familiar with the Beano, the Dandy, all these comics. Uh, pre sort of, I don't know, 2000s, maybe even like mid 90s, uh, every single one of those comics, every single word, letter in a balloon was done by hand. 
okay, by one person, right? Uh, they were every so they were painstakingly letter each one of those, and so they then needed to have their place. Okay, if St if Stephen got carried away and drawn Spider Man up here, drawn Spider Man's head up there and over there, they're like, well, what are we going to do? Because the reason why speech for wolf, for instance, what do bullions do? They go up. Okay, I'm a scientist, but I know that. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, and you know that because you are scientists or you're interested in science, okay? They go up, okay? So that's where they are on the page. Now, sometimes you can you can have them down here at the bottom if you want, but most of the time, more often than not, they're up here. So if he was to have drawn anything up here that was like really important, telling the story, Spider-Man's head, for instance, if he'd drawn up there and put a balloon there, he's like, well, I'm just gonna have to cover it because I've got all this artwork. And so you've got to, he has to know your place. So he has to know how a comic panel would work. And so everybody had their place and everybody knew where not to do what they were supposed to do. You can also have these things here, which are called bubbles, okay? There's two different ways. Of, so you have your, your speech in here, da, 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 okay? What, what comes first? Uh, word of the bubble? What do you, words, yes, you do the words first. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And then you do the balloon around it. It's a bit rough, but, it's, but it gives you the idea. But if you do the balloon first, right, you've got to try and fit it in. It's all going to get squashed, right? So you do the bubble first. The same one with thought bubbles. The thought bubbles also work in a different visual way as well um, because they um, you can visualize things in different ways. If I say to you guys now, everybody think about um, give me something really science-y. I don't know. Give me something science-y. Go on, science thing. Atoms. Everybody think about atoms. What do you say? Bottom. Oh, okay. All right. That's you think. All right. I just said atoms. think about atoms for one second. What are you thinking about? You think about the word atoms, or you thinking about atoms, what they look like? Most of the time, you 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 work on the visual. If I would say to you, think about the word atoms, then you would think about A C O M S. Okay, but. If, if I'm saying think about them, then you do a visual. So thought bubbles can also work. You can do this in speech bubbles if you, if, in a little way. But thought bubbles also work where you can actually show, maybe Spider-Man think about pizza. So you get a little slice of pizza in there. So you know, so again, just by looking at it, you know what's going on. You've got to say something here, but you're going to think about pizza. You don't even need to be able to read a comic. It could be in a different language, okay? Uh, as long as you can tell what's going on, then the comic can communicate uh, to you um, in, in a different way. So that is how a panel would work. Now, you've also got, uh, is anybody familiar with um, with manga? Yeah, okay. Manga, Japanese comics, all right, okay. Can anybody tell me the fundamental difference between Japanese comics and comics of the Western world? Guys, what were you saying? Guys? Besides, it was, is that the, the way they're drawn? Yes, there's a way that we read. Yeah, so, yes. So this is my comment here, okay, Captain Serial, all right, okay. And this is the cover, right, That's the back cover, right? And then when we read it, we open it like this, okay? And then we read uh, our, the comic from left to right, left to right, okay? In Japan, this would be on this bit, on this bit, because they read from right to left, all right? So the cover would be on the back like that, and they would open it like this. Now, and so as well, quite interesting, because you've got... A page here, and we'll see that one okay. Yeah, all right. So, as well as reading from right to left, so if they were reading a comic strip, this would work okay. So, this would be one, two, three, four, okay. And also, obviously, because in a comic, uh, if you've got two people in a panel, two people in a panel, who, who talks first? In a, in, a, if, if, in, in a comic, like if, for instance, one of mine, who would talk first? Sorry? Yeah, the left, yes, the person on the left, okay? So the person on the left, again, these are this is the science of comics, okay? So from left to right. So you've then got, uh, so for instance, uh, this guy's here saying something, and this person is replying back, okay? You can never, you should never, if this person is talking first, this person should be over here. The only way that I would allow that to be the case, if he was talking first and he was over there, um, is if um, it, it was the only person talking. But in my opinion, there's no reason 
for that person, he, the only one talking, for him to be on the right hand side. Okay. Yes. Yes. So when you're looking at people in action like Spider-Man, they're going the other way. They're always going right and left. Uh, what you mean he's coming in this way? Yeah. yeah well, because so he's uh, at this point he's coming in uh, and he's the only character in the panel. Okay. So if he was coming into the panel, even if character, doing that way. Right. Uh, I would say. Well, I would. So, so the way that I no, so it's a, it's a, I, I like I like what you're asking. Okay, so I would say my um, uh, typical way for me to draw is because I'm right-handed is from right to left. Okay, so my default way of drawing somebody is coming this way. All right, I have to purposely force myself to draw somebody coming in that. Way. But in terms of um, telling, sorry. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't write over here and come that way. Yeah, but when I'm drawing, it's it, it's it's curious. I've never really thought about that that way. But yeah, I would technically draw. I would always draw this way. Uh, but yes, I, I would know to write that way. Um, but in terms of it, it um, being an issue in terms of storytelling, um, it doesn't matter whether they're coming in this way or that way. Uh, but it's a good it's it's a good question, I, and and it's quite interesting. I hadn't really thought about that. But if you yeah, but if you've got two people in the panel, um. Then, uh, then that, that is the rule one and two. All right, okay. You don't want to have anything where uh, the the balloons are being crossed like that. They literally look. It even makes a cross. It says no right there. You can see it. Okay. Um, and you can have uh, one person talking. You could have a person thinking. All right. So you could have uh, this guy here like that. Okay. This person saying hi. My name is John. All right. Any Johns here tonight? No, no Johns. Oh, there is a John. There you go. This is John here. Say, hi, my name is John. Uh, and this person here, he's called Tony. Any Tonys here? No. Oh, Sarah, I always, always insist on one Tony in the audience at any time. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, no, next time. All right. Uh, so this is Tony. Tony's going, John? Thinking it. John, I thought his name was Steve. All right. <laughs> and so John here, okay, he thinks Tony believes him because why would he not do because he's in this world whereas the, the thought bubble is bringing the, the story out the world and, and connecting with the reader so you get an insight into a little bit of a clue and it's all about giving kind of visual clues and that's how comics work now in terms of manga um as well as uh, reading from right to left it wouldn't technically uh, you would probably have panels like this because if you might have seen japanese characters they tend to be and chinese characters they tend to be stacked on top of each other they don't, they're not really in lines and so that's kind of how a manga kind of works as well. You don't tend to get uh, panels like this in comics. You in manga, you tend to get panels like that. You might get two across, so they go from one, two, like that, okay? Or you might, you could get three, okay? Because again, they're going down like that. But again, the, the, uh, the, the, the speech would, would uh, work in a different way. You could have... So if, if you've got multiple, but, but you've got two people talking, yes, of course, you're going to have one and then two. So that's the first person talking there, and that's the second person, all right? Like that. But if you've just got one person talking, then that balloon could be anywhere. It could be there, it could be there, all right? So does anybody have any other questions at this point? Right, okay. All right, okay. Right. All right, okay. So, yeah, I mean, you know, you, think you would have. I mean, you've got this kind of, you know, when somebody's coming into the panel, you might be, they, they're arriving into the panel uh, and you know, to, 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 to find the, the, the bad guy or something like that. You could possibly have it like that. Now, I'm just going to give you another a little interesting little bit as well about, um, so we have the panels. And this is something that I, I, I do a lot of work with children, uh, which is really cool. And you learn a lot from working with children. And um, you also learn a lot about what kind of things they're, they're into and, and how everything kind of works. And you, know, that's quite, you, know, you see things in a very different way. And um, one thing I've noticed with the children, with, with anybody really, is anybody here like to draw? Would I like to draw, yeah, okay. Anybody, uh, so there's only just you. Literally, yeah. in a room of people, 
Is that because no one you don't like to draw because you're just a drawing her moron? Or is it because you don't feel like you're good at drawing? Okay, right, okay. So it's not because you're uh, drawing actually isn't about being good at drawing. Okay. Drawing is actually about it's the most important thing is about it's confidence. Okay. That's what stops you from drawing is your confidence because you doubt your ability. Uh, you might have seen um, uh, uh, some of you might have, have had some little people in your house. Hey, I'm not talking like a little guy called Don. He's like, who is this guy? And how did you get in my house, Don? Let me give you a keys. You know, like a little uh, little child, two or you know, two or three year old. If you used to give a child a felt pen and a piece of paper, what do they tend to do? They tend to do this. Okay, okay. And then some of you incorrectly would say that they were scribbling. It's not scribbling, that's them drawing. Okay. They've got more confidence than you guys have. Because they don't stand there with a felt pen and a piece of paper going, oh, why are my drawings? Why are they not so good? Oh, why are they not perfect? No, they're just like, yeah, I've got a felt pen and piece of paper. Thank you. And it's going to go for it. They're emulating you. And they can overtake you. They have much more confidence. And and, and that's I found that really interesting. And, and, and particularly over the past few years, I've noticed that children... Um, their confidence levels have, have been knocked and a lot of that is due to the pandemic you know I noticed the children who come to my studio who were sort of like maybe sort of eight years old you know well, four years ago they were four and they've missed like key things of just being around children and emulating and, and, and you know which is exactly what the little ones are doing they're just emulating you they're just like okay I'm, I'm going to draw too this is my drawing this is my uh, this is actually a, a flamingo uh, lying on a settee and I think uh, that's Lionel Richie just near it okay and um, that's, that's what I say. I don't know what you guys say. Um, and uh, so a lot of that uh, was, was what stopped the children sort of developing in a certain way. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I found that quite fascinating that, that how, you know, so now uh, some children come to the studio to draw with me uh, and they're quite hesitant because their confidence levels are lower than they should be at, at sort of like a six year old. Um, so going back to the children, if I was to say to, a, uh, to like a, a younger child, say maybe four, three or four. Um, uh, I want you to draw me somebody, somebody stood on the ground, all right? They're stood on the ground, okay? The first thing they would do, so when children think about the ground, they think about it's very, very deep. Now it is, there's a lot of ground down there, all right? And they would draw the ground and they would so they'd go, okay, the ground, there's the ground, okay? Going back to our comic panel, all right? The, the, how a comic panel works. What does that look like to you? What do you what do you recognize there? Anybody? Sorry? The bottom third. Whereas the comic panel is works with the okay. So a child, because children tend to draw up, younger children tend to draw up. We we draw down. Okay, I'm gonna draw a person here. Do a little bit more, you know, so you've got here before the stage. Okay, going here, so you draw there. Okay, so I'm nice, smiling. It's got a little tie on, maybe. Okay, nice. Oh, it was like a nice 70s tie. Yeah, it's got a little pocket there, with a flower in it, maybe. It's got spikes and that. It's got, it's got jazzy boots on. Maybe a little uh, stirpy kind of thing. Some kind of cowboy guy. That, it's got his hand there, like that. Maybe he's got his sleeve rolled up. Uh, he's got it holding his, uh, he's got a glass of wine, you know. Okay, there he is. Look at him, he's so happy. Okay, and a uh, round of applause for this guy. All right, okay. <laughs> and he's thinking, what can he be thinking about? I don't know. He's thinking, <laughs> thinking about his wife. Yes, okay, it's just called Dory. She wears glasses. Yeah, okay. And uh, there she is. So nice, she's got curly hair. In fact, the hair is so curly, it actually almost becomes part of the speech. It's a thought bubble. Okay, which is another thing we can talk about in a second as well. Uh, and so there he is, threw him down. Okay, I went back up there and drew that. But you give, you ask a two or three year old to draw, they draw the big ground, so standing on the ground. Okay, and then they go, okay, I'm going to do some legs now. All right, I'm going to get my body here like that. And everything's nice and big. And then my head like this. And, uh, and then the arms like that. Okay. So where's the speech bubble going to go? It's, it can't. It's jammed up here. Okay, there's no room for the speech bubble because they took the space. They took it, all right? They took it there because if I was going to draw the ground, you just draw just enough, all right? And then you can draw your character here like that, standing on here, you doing that, look, okay, look, there we go. And that, my friends, right, the comics, right? <laughs> okay, that's how it works, 
Okay, all you need to do is know these fundamental basics. You too can create a comic. I challenge every single person in this room to have some confidence to take a pen and a piece of paper tomorrow or maybe Wednesday, but not Thursday, but possibly on Friday. Okay, and do a little comic about something that's happened to you, something you like. Uh, maybe you, if you keep a diary, anybody here maybe keeps a diary, do in a comic form, all right? And think about me, the guy who looks a little bit like George Clooney holding a belt pen, all right? He's <laughs> laughing. <laughs> all right. Okay, and think about that. This is where your speech bubbles go, your communication. Can you also have, can you have your, say with me, speech bubble, thought bubble, and what? One of those. Wisp, who said that? Really? Yeah, who said me? Yeah, come here, come here. Wisp, you can't talk. Okay, so again, you see those great things. Visually, you see them very well. You don't even need anything in them. You already know that somebody is speaking, thinking. Okay, you can also have sound effects in school, then they're just on a mat up here. It doesn't have to sound like fun. No, not really. In comics, they're called sound effects, words that describe sounds. Like Wham, which is also a popular group from the 1980s. Okay. And you can have them just kind of big and chunky like that. Because again, in real life, it might be this. You hear that. Okay. In comics, you've got to visualize that. You might show a hand going on a door, but you back it up, you reinforce that with a knock knock sound effect. Okay. And that's how comics work. Thank you very much for listening to my little chat here on comics. Uh, I hope you've learned something. I feel free to ask me some questions. Uh, thank you, Jane. Do anybody have any questions about anything to do with comics? No, sorry, the science of comics, which is comics in general. Yes. Okay. When we look at uh, yes. Look, you start. Okay. Right, okay. Right. So I think that might be when you're drawing Spider Man. Coming in that way, possibly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it is curious, though, because in terms of the particular way that we read, the comics do go from left to right. So you would follow it around, you would follow it so one, two, three, four, five, six, if the panels are like that. So it's curious that that's so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But comics again. You know there are rules. But you, if you learn the rules, you can then break the rules. Okay. Because then you can. You know you can put a speech ball down at the bottom. Okay. As long as you kind of play the game, you can have little speech balls here. You can start off with something. You could have two characters in a panel. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you might have one character who's like this, and he's saying that, he's flying back, and then, then you go one, two, and then you might have a little one here, you know, and blah, 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 and this kind of thing. Yeah, so you, but you, as long as you know the flow of it, and how they work, you know how to read it. It's all about visually telling the story. So it's very, very clear to somebody um, which way everything kind of works. So anybody could pick up a comic and, and get a sense. And again, it's quite nice to be able to pick up a comic um, uh, in another country and see how well it's telling you so you get a sense of what's going on and then if you could figure out if you know maybe you know a little bit of uh, conversational uh, Spanish or French madam uh, you uh, you can then sort of recognise words you recognise the words and associate those with the actions with the visual and next thing you know comics has taught you another language alright okay mm -hmm. hooray for comics so let's have a round of applause for comics there we go alright okay so yeah, thank you very much for listening to my talk. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was fun enough. Uh, and uh, yeah, if anybody's got any more questions or want to ask, oh, this guy in the fantastic shirt. Round of applause for this shirt, everybody. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Graphic novel. My most hated, hated term in history. Okay. It's funny, actually, because in the last science talk I did, Somebody asked about graphic novel, and I'm going to explain to you why I can't stand that term. All right, graphic novels was a term that was, it's anybody, else, not, anybody not familiar with that term, graphic novel, okay? Graphic novel is basically a comic with a spine, a thick, thicker comic, okay? 
and it was coined, uh, the, the, the term was coined in the, in the 1980s to allow grown men to read comics, okay? <laughs> oh, I'm reading a graphic novel. Well, Batman's inside it, you're reading a comic, okay? All right. Uh, so, oh, no. Alan Moore, we mentioned him before, famously created, uh, co-created Watchmen, one of the most um, the famous uh, comic books because it resisted. So, allow me to, I keep a ping around, but that's the way it goes, all right? So, comics come out each month, okay? Every Wednesday, okay? Uh, there's a the new comics come out in America and the comics everywhere. Wednesday is 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 the day, and most of the time you get you single issues, okay. And so, say for instance, um, you've got a series; it's six issues, six months worth of comics. Once that's completed, then gets collected together, not in a graphic novel, okay. In what's known a trade paperback, all right, okay. Now, comics is quite expensive hobby to have, you know. So a lot of people don't buy the single issue. They wait till it comes out as a trade paperback and they buy it then. That's got a spine. Graphic novel basically is something that was um, created as a standalone. It only existed in that format. It never came out as single issues. Okay. Um, but I don't like the term graphic novels because I think it, it puts a block on people's reading. Because what's happened, happened now is that comics that are sold in bookshop, of which there are lots of them. Okay. Um, are in the graphic novel section for kids. Graphic novel sounds a little bit spiky, a little bit inaccessible for children. Now, basically, as Alan Moore said, in the 80s, a man who's been connected with so many graphic novels, he said they're not called graphic novels, they're called fat comics, because that's what they are. They're just fatter comics, okay? The last thing you want to do in a with, with, a, with a medium that is still looked on by some people as a lesser form of literature, which is insane, because some of the, the, the stories and content in comics is incredible. Um, and, and, and by no way, shape, or form, a lesser form of literature. But the last thing you want to do is put any blocks on it to stop people from then wanting to be able to access it. Oh, well, let's not read that because it's a graphic novel. I don't think it's for me. And so, and, and so because it's got attached to children's comics, that's why I really don't like it. Um, so basically, uh, there's no difference between comics and graphic novels. They're all, they're all the same. There's just the fact that uh, comics with two free staples. So, okay. Anybody else? Anybody? Oh, God, yes. Um, Ladies first. When you put the they want to be Yes. And it's very, very vicious. Yes. And you've got people with horrible history, half story, and half, 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 very different read the channel who had because they're so original. Right. And in fact, I find that sometimes I'll read the text and say to the child who can read. Yes. Read the comic book afterwards. It's more a statement than a so, I think it's because of, because they're so visual. Yeah, so comics um are quite tricky to read out loud. Yeah. Okay. They they weren't really designed to be read out loud. The picture books and uh, are um, something that go hand in hand with bedtime. Okay, mm -hmm. you sit and you look at the pictures and you read the narration. This is what Photo is doing today. Uh, there are more and more picture books these days that do use comic book storytelling. In fact, there's quite a lot of cartoonists um, who have now moved into children's books um, because um, there's more money in that. Okay, uh, and there's a lot of books out there for, for, for children. You have to go into Waterstones, and the children's book market is huge. The children's comic book section. Uh, is, is huge. Comics like Bunny vs. Monkey and Dogma. Uh, Dogma, uh, if, if you're not familiar with Dogma, is probably the most successful comic that is out today. The amount of copies that those comics sell is insane. Um, but yeah, you're, you're correct. They're, they're not easy to, to read. So I, uh, back in 2018, I did this comic called Hot Dog and Mustard with that in mind because I have two children myself. Um, and um, I wanted to take on board the idea of comics, comic storytelling, we're doing a picture book format. So each page of this is one panel. And it was written in a way that was ideal to be read out loud. So there are funny things for the adults to say out loud. And you can see the pictures, but then the, the, the characters drive the story. Uh, and so, um, but then you, but also the great thing about comics is, is that getting the child to engage with the visual, what do, and what do you think is happening? Uh, because then they can make their own stories. And then if you read it back to them, then you discover whether the story, whether they've 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 guessed what the story was, or maybe they've come up with their own story. 
which that might lead them to go, oh, do you know what? Maybe I'm going to write my own version of that. So, but I understand what you mean. Yeah. So. Yes. There's a little bit more work involved. So if you were going to sit with a child and, and, and read the Beano to them at bed, bedtime, mm -hmm. um, that would be a different kind of reading experience. Um, but again, but still a worthwhile one, I, I think. So. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's all yeah. Yeah, and there's a lot. And there's a lot of there's a lot of boys, and, and some people don't like this kind of thing. Where, where boys are reluctant readers, uh, but comics, particularly if you were in France, you know, comics are the first thing that any children read over that. You know, it, it, that comics is a huge uh, industry, um, and um, so yeah, for for boys, because I didn't really read a lot of a lot of books. I was just reading comics because I love to draw, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to read the comics because I was there for all the visuals. I was just taking in all the visuals, and still to this day, I'll fuck through everything I've still got and I've read it a million times I don't tend to read them that much but I'll go through and I'll just pour over the drawings and you know because I understood them for a different reason because you know as a creator myself so yeah so yes so okay so the other dimension I was going to ask that time time so sometimes you get like captioning the film like the next day yeah yeah okay but just for the default like that happening that happening that happens in quick succession, what what's the default position when you read a comic strip? Is it assumed they all like happen one after another in, in rapid time? It depends. So you you can have some comics that so for instance this one this is kind of in, it's done in real time so it starts and it ends and it all happens in real time. There's no cutaways or anything like that. Um, sometimes you might have a and then. Uh, and, that, and that sort of jumps from from a you know you you, you there's an assumption of okay we we were here and now we're here. Because you don't need the same way as it is in film, TV. You don't need to say, okay, well, we, we're doing this scene. This is really interesting. Let's just follow our heroes as they get to the next scene. <laughs> you, you do a little cutaways. And again, it's all about making it interesting, um, what's visually interesting. And that's the core of comics is um, how it looks, the visual. Um, uh, you, 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 if it doesn't look good, um, you know, you, you're not going to get somebody to read. Just you know, you, you want it. You, you, no one wants just a, a bunch of static heads just you know, just churning out dialogue and dialogue. That's why the Marvel method was so good because uh, it was based on an idea that then was a story was visualized, and then Stanley. But the the way that um, that Marvel comics and Stanley and Steve Ditko worked, it was all a power play because Stanley wanted to be able to do it all because he felt he was the guy. It was running the show, okay? So when Steve Ditko would then draw his story, their constant battle, because they, they, they were not friends for very long, their constant battle was because then Stan would then come, and if you look at a lot of old comics, there's a lot of words that are very, very, very wordy. And a lot of that was because Stan Lee wanted to put his mind, oh, you're not going to get all the uh, the accolades here, Steve. I'm going to show everybody that I can write all this dialogue that everyone's going to be more impressed with. And a lot of the time he would... So, Steve Ditko would steer the story his way, and then Stanley would then steer it back uh, with, with the words, much to the annoyance of Steve Ditko, and that's ultimately why they stopped working together, because he was changing his stories. Yes? Yeah. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, well, well, I have a number. So, uh, Bill Watson, who I mentioned before, Calhoun Hobbs is probably one of my all-time favourite cartoonists. Uh, there's the mighty Sergio Aragonas, who is a Mexican cartoonist, uh, who is uh, 87 years old, still working today. Uh, I was very lucky enough in 2017 uh, after being literally uh, in awe of his work uh, since I was 12 to actually not only meet him but work with him uh, at Comics Festival in the Lake District, which I'm connected with. Um, and he um, is very famous for being very fast. And so he does a lot of, there's a big comic convention called the San Diego Comic Con. 
it takes place, I think it's about July, something like that. And they have a big quick draw thing on, on, I think it was on a Saturday night, where basically there's a panel of cartoonists and then the audience or the moderator will suggest things, uh, little scenarios, and he would draw them. And he's known to be fast. And when he came to the Lake Comic Art Festival in 2017, I believe it's his only appear only uh, comics event he's ever been to in the UK. Um, they wanted to capitalize on that, so they wanted to get him doing a quick draw. Uh, so he was the main sort of guy. And I got a phone call uh, on the, this was like for the weekend, and I got a phone call on the Wednesday from Julie, who who organized it. And she said, uh, "Would you like to take part in the quick draw, the live quick draw in front of an audience that Sergio Aragona?" is going to be doing and how could i say no to that uh, yeah the hell out of me because like oh my god uh, and um but there i was uh, fumbling through it as he was just rattling across but i i, I glanced across them and there is my all-time favorite cartoonist uh, or one of the two uh, and um yeah that was pretty uh that was pretty cool so yes what do you do on people like bill type what well, sorry bill type yeah what was the first part I'm built out. He's a, a famous a, a cartoonist. Certain, certain age. Well, I've no. I'm not aged, sir. <laughs> In what way? What do you mean? Do you, do you feel that because it's uh, humor? Hmm. Uh, yeah. And um, do you feel that he's able to tell his story well? It's images. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. Because they're you know. They're, well, he, well, he is technically one of my favorite guys, but he's one of your favorites. Yeah, well, yeah, well, but that's the, that's the beauty of it, is that we all like different things. We all respond to different visuals in different ways. And what something I found quite interesting when I went back, came back to kind of really sort of looking at my comics again, and it's, you know, like say 14, 15 years ago, was going through my box of comic books uh, and seeing just what titles I got and found that um, I was buying most of my comics I was buying based on one who um who's drawing them. So I might have a collection of Iron Man comics. Not necessarily I'm like a huge Iron Man fan, but I had a chunk of them because at one point they were drawn by a cartoonist called John Romita Jr., who I really love. And then I also had a lot a chunk of Daredevil comics. Again, Daredevil was he like one of my favorites. Spider Man was always my favorite, but I had a chunk of Daredevil comics because John Romita Jr. drew those. So I was drawn in always by the visual. You could get me to read any comic if it looked, if I liked how it looked. Yeah. Yes. But on that theme of more adult. Okay. Oh, uh, um, you got a, you got a uh, you got a twinkle in your eye. What are you gonna say? <laughs> I met I met the guys from Fizz. Uh, no, I like Fizz. No, it's um. I've... Yeah, Fizz, Fizz still goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so the, the guys from Viz, actually, um, they are connected uh, with the latest Comic Art Festival. So they always go to that every year. Uh, and in 2019, I was very lucky to get to go to uh, Huntington Beach in California for a big comics festival there that the Lakes and um, the National Cartoonist Society of America had organized this big uh, comic festival. It was basically in the streets of Huntington Beach, looking out, the, uh, looking out literally at the ocean. It was hell for five days, okay? Uh, <laughs> And it was a most, one of the most fantastic experiences. Uh, and the guys from Viz were there, uh, and um, they did like a little uh, comedic kind of presentation one evening where they basically read out the most British humour possible to a big room full of Americans. Uh, and it, it, was, it was quite amusing. So, yeah, um, uh, yeah. so uh, excuse my French, but the dog's bollocks didn't necessarily connect quite the same. But everybody learned something that yeah. night. So there you go. Well, yeah, because again, it's, no, but it's comics for everybody, and that's the beauty of it. Is that it's not just comics aren't just for children, and there aren't just for adults. You know, there's, there's there's lots of comics for lots of different people. There are comics for people who don't even read comics. I have a friend called Tor Freeman. In fact, Tor is a cartoonist, and she's in, in this comic group, and she does these fantastic comics, um, comics for kids. But she also does some quite adult stuff. She famously knows nothing about comics. OK, in fact, this weekend at the Comics Festival, she's going to be one of a few cartoons who are going to be on two teams. Uh, and we're doing a, a live quiz called Have I Got Comics For You? 
and Tor is on it because she said in her own words, I know nothing about comics. And I thought it'd be funny to have Thor in there and think comics in front of a live audience, uh, questions in front of a live audience. Uh, so yeah, there are people who make comics who don't, have never read Spider-Man, have got no interest in Spider-Man, um, but maybe have read, um, you know, some uh, more serious work. So uh, yeah, so the guys from Biz have got, yeah, have got their audience. Um, and that audience might never have ever bought a comic before, but they just like, you know, so uh, yeah, but no, I think, it, I, I think it comes out every month, Biz, still. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they always do the annual. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, yes. In the beginning, you were you picked on me. <laughs> sorry. No, sorry. You seem nice. Yes, yeah, sorry. My answer. Yes. Yes. I realized you want your films tonight. Yes. Practice cartoons. Like this, a single cartoon and things like that. Yes. They always the writing at the bottom, quite the other way around. Yeah, yeah. They look at the visual first and then read the funny line at the bottom. Yeah. So you would have, so one of my favorites, again, another one of my favorites, uh, is Gary Larson, who did a comic strip called The Far Side. Okay. It's just an absolute genius comic strip. Uh, not even a comic strip, a gag, a, a single panel yeah. strip. So, this, so, yeah, you've got comic books. So let's go, let's reverse it. So you've got comic books, multiple panels on a page multiple pages you've then got comic strips or it could be um uh, this comic book is made up of individual comic strips so this is one page each page of this is one contained strip okay uh, you might have half page strips uh, you get those in the beano or maybe you have those in the sunday newspapers not much anymore um uh, and then you've got uh, and then you go back you've got the comic strip the four panel and then you've got your gag cartoon which is basically a funny image with so you can see something going on there, but you'll always need a little text underneath it, okay? So yes, so they would have the drawing here. Maybe every now and then they might use a speech bubble, but more often than not, Far Side would have a little, uh, one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but so my one of my favorites was two, there were two cows uh, blowing up um, an inflatable, uh, uh, two bulls blowing up an inflatable cow and underneath it, so she's looking good of her. Uh, and so, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and then one, there was another one where um, there was a, there was a tightrope and there was a little, uh, little dog on it uh, with his, uh, and he's got the bar like that and something along the lines of, um, he was however high and he realized that he was, uh, what was it? You can't, he was a new dog and this was an old trick or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, so, the, but some really eclectic and very, very unusual humor there. Um, but yeah, he's one of the he's one of the great. But yeah, that is quite interesting. That yeah, you've just got your picture and then the words there, and then like uh, the New Yorker, uh, they have these famous the New Yorker cartoons. That, that does only have single yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, this very rarely will have speech bubbles. I think going to yeah, 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 yeah. So you, so you you see the thing and you're like, what is going on here? And you're reading you're like, ah, like that. Yeah, because obviously you can't have one without the other. Um, you couldn't just have the thing and be like, well, what, what does that even mean? Yeah, so you see that. So. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. And you're not going to even think you need that what you want, right? Yeah, and then somewhere along the line that that, that the two things separated and and the the, the the more finished things carried on. But then somebody went, oh, actually, I quite like doing just those, and let's just entertain people in those. <laughs> oh, really? Well, there you go. I'll I'll put that in my next. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I, I don't know if anybody's heard of Donald Trump, but he, uh, he, 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 he's perfect. Yeah. There was a the recent uh, the cover of, um, I think it was of the New Yorker, where um, they've got him putting the handcuffs onto his small little hands. Yeah. Where the handcuffs are very big, so he could just slide around. So, yeah. Yeah. Did you have another question, sir? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. Another to this. Are there yeah. Different... Oh, yeah, there are. So, I, I just go back to the comic festival in the Lake District. Uh, that's an international comic art festival, and I've been going, I've been involved with them for uh, nine years this year. And they attract cartoonists and, and creators in the world of comics from all over the world. And um, the past two years, my whole family, we've all been going. It's a fantastic cultural experience for the girls because last year we were um, in line for our evening meal with. Uh, cartoons from Ethiopia. Uh, so they bring over contingents of, of, of creators um, who have uh, been funded uh, to come over by their version of the Arts Council or that kind of thing. So it means that they get, so they come over as like little groups. Uh, mm -hmm. And so you get to rub shoulders with all these people who would never have ever seen their work before. But, mm -hmm. Sorry? Uh, possibly. Well, you had the famous thing, didn't you, with the Charlie Hebdo um, in in the, in in France, where uh, they they mocked. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was, but then they all they they, they, they killed them all, didn't they? And also, a lot of cartoons lost their lives just for poking fun, you know, making a joke. Um, so it just goes to show that you know um, you can't just crack jokes willy nilly sometimes. Um, but yeah, I've been quite lucky because in the past couple of years, I've been working with two charities. Um, connected to Africa uh, with comics to get literacy into the hands of children uh, who don't get a chance to do things like read things like that. Uh, and I was commissioned to do a comic in 20, 2019 uh, to help uh, kids in Rwanda uh, who um, uh, have disabilities. It, it was a way to show them uh, how to, um, where to not drink water, uh, how to brush their teeth. Uh, to help girls understand uh, about periods and stuff like that. So I did a comic about that. So one minute I'm doing these crazy kind of comics, and then in another case I'm doing those kind of things. It's very re rewarding getting a chance to do things like that. So, uh, yeah, comics are great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any more questions before we finish? Yes. Um, I think my eight-year-old daughter has been sort of old or after whatever in school. Drawing comics for the What school did she go to? Uh, she's a mumbo. Oh, really? You know, and it's sort of, I don't, is, is there a reason for that? Or you don't really, is it because it's considered a lesser form of. Oh, well, I, I truly art. believe that you, you can't, you shouldn't teach comics, and be true for anything, really, but you shouldn't, shouldn't really teach comics unless you're making comics. Right. So you probably don't find many, many teachers who've made a comic. So to so, truly understand, so I, I go into a lot of schools, yeah. uh, and I think what, you know, I've been into a lot of schools, and comics do become something that they, they, they they carry on and, and they're like oh this is not something I really understood um but yeah I mean, there are a lot of teachers that, that do use comic form and, and and comics are as they should do seeping back into the daily life of children you know when I grew up um, comics were everywhere you go to the news agents and they were just all that there daily, you know? yeah. but you, the news agents don't even exist anymore in that same way yeah Right. Uh, on a big poster, because they were teaching it, but it's technical. Oh, okay. Eventually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because right. yeah, yeah. I'll be showing my book. Oh, okay. Yeah, and if you're in well, you could you should come to the studio and, and come yeah. do one of my work. Bring us one of my works. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I recommend getting a description book on all things. Yeah. Yeah, no, the piece is fantastic. I, I did, 
I, I did some work on the Phoenix last year. So uh, the Phoenix is great. So you've got there are two weekly comics, you know, the, the Beano and the Phoenix. So everybody knows the Beano and the Phoenix. Is good. Well, the difference between the Beano and the Phoenix, Beano is very on uh, on house, house style. So everybody, you know, they've got all the characters that you remember: Dennis the Menace, Nasher, and um, Roger the Dodgeman and the Minx. Uh, the Phoenix, um, basically, they come from more book publishing world. So they, uh, so they have pioneered the whole thing of um, getting uh, comic books, novels, uh, yeah. into Waterstone. So basically selling comics to kids. They found that, well, of course, there are no news agents. How do we get kids to read comics? Well, we'll get them into bookshops. If they go in bookshops to buy the picture books and stuff like that. So let's get, oh, there you go. Well, this is different. Oh, what are you reading? Uh, I'm, I'm reading a graphic novel. No, you're not. You're reading a comic. And so the Phoenix are very good about it. So they do have the weekly comic. And like I say, I was, I, I tried, yeah, you can do a subscription. Uh, I tried for four years to go to the Phoenix. And finally, uh, the year before last, I finally wore them down. And uh, and I, I got, I did a comic for them. But this is what uh, what the comic Goof is about. So at the moment, it's just a one-off one that we're launching at the comic festival. But he was taking all that idea of the Beano and the Phoenix and uh, a my love of Mad Magazine and all those classics of Oink. I don't know if anyone remembers the Oink from the 1980s, which is basically, it was a comic that came out of Manchester and all the characters in it were pigs. And um, quite anarchic. It's a bit like uh, Tid was put on winning, winning comics. I don't know if anybody remembers Tid was. Uh, and so I wanted to sort of embrace that and do something different. So we, I wanted to collect together as many. So I used part of my funding uh, from Maxwell Town Council that we used to, to put the festival on. And I wanted to invest for part of me getting a bigger part of funding this year. Um, was my um, my proposal to put uh, to uh, to pay creators to invest in other creators, uh, and so part of that went to paying uh, the creators that I I got in touch with. They asked if they would be involved, uh, pay them a fair a fair page rate for each of their comics. So this is a comic that I'm incredibly proud of that we put this together. So I think your daughter would very much like a copy of Goose. <laughs> Whenever I go to schools, um, no. under the um, you know the umbrella, of, I, you know, I'm a cartoonist and I make comics. Okay, interestingly enough, one of the things we don't tend to do that much of at the start, particularly uh, if I'm just going in for like a half day, we probably actually won't actually make what somebody would deem quote quote a comic. Okay, the thing we would probably do is I would start with a couple of lines at first, and then I would say, well, I draw a line under it like that, and then we'll give it half first, or we'll put some lines down like this. And then we'll we'll draw this thing here. We can see that's a rectangle. We don't need to finish it off. We don't need to worry about it all being perfect. We put the lines like that. And we can round this off like that. And we can add a bit of this and the thing to the eye to show again. Now we're talking about where it stopped just being a picture, it starts to come alive because we, we're getting our little bit of a ding like that kind of thing. So we're drawing attention to it. Maybe this robot was wearing a hat. I don't know what kind of hat he was wearing. Maybe he's wearing a bed. He's a little thing like that. Where's the funny just throwing one hat when you can draw two hats? Yeah, a little cowboy hat here on the top as well. Maybe a little uh, baseball cap that says, I heart New York, you know, like that. Okay. Then you can add these little lines. What do they do? What do they make it look like happening? <laughs> Makes it look moving. Okay. They're called wobble lines. They're in France. They're known as wobble lines. Okay. Uh, and um, yeah, wobble. Uh, and then you can, uh, let's have a think. We can maybe draw, we can take this rectangle, turn it on its side. We can get one down here like this. We can do a triangle here. We only have to draw the two. And then we get that line there. We put it there. We take that line and put it there and that. We've got some spiky triangles that we don't even need to finish. We can add a little bit of uh, Jack Kirby crackle for those that really know what that means. Okay, kind of cosmic kind of thing. A little bit of a shine like that. Maybe one, two, three circles. So it's all about drawing shapes. We could have done the circle inside it. We could put maybe three lines there to show it's glass. Okay. We could then connect this robot to the rocket. It's flying along uh, with the power of legs. Okay, so let's give him a little leg here like that. Okay, little sort of feet. Maybe he's got three legs somewhere, right? He's got this one up here, sticking up like that. Just show again, it's visual, so you can see that's coming there. We've got the wobble lines in there. Maybe this robot is holding something with his long robot arm. Okay, he's holding, uh, I know, he's holding an ice cream. Okay, and it's a big ice cream. It's getting close to the top of the page. Maybe we've broken the fourth wall, which basically meant 
uh, the characters become very aware that they're inside of comics they can start talking to you. So maybe the uh, the the, uh, the ice cream topples over you hit the top of the, uh, the comic page. Now they're what they're linking to our events. And then they're breaking away so much that they're actually flying. Maybe that's what not after. I'm not sure. We're telling comics just by visuals at this moment. There's no words or anything like that. Uh, and then maybe one of the things become ice cream, you've got a little melty bit here kind of thing, because obviously you've got the sun over here, cooking's all alive, especially like sausages in a big barbecue, if you think about it. Okay, cooking's all alive, making it all melt, and then it's all falling off. But then let's turn these ice creams into planets, so now the ice cream's solid. Okay, some people might say, yeah, these kind of planets and stars like that, you know, we're playing for it. Well, you can, because look, I'm just drawing it, okay? <laughs> and that's the thing, you put blocks in things, and I know science is certain rules, but let's just think about the fact that anything that scientific happens, just somebody's tried to just push the boundary, do different things, explore things in different ways. If I just went along with what was right or what was wrong or what was deemed a certain way and didn't, I have to know the rules and then break the rules a little bit. That's when more fun things happen. Uh, finish off. Mm. And then let's get another little arm here like that. Okay. And just so. You look at a little bit of depth, you get the, the, the little planet here, or crater. Okay. No, I'm still not as fast as the JR again, even though maybe you're thinking I'm quite fast. I'm not sure. He's really fast. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Right, and then that, so that's how, you know, you can draw so in that way. I kind of do all the things with the robot here, you know, again, we can do that, so you know, it's flashing. Maybe we'll give him a little, uh, he's got a little pizza inside his stomach like that, he's cooking pizza. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And there we go. And that, my friends, is how comic book storytelling just with a drawing. Okay, so thank you very much. Yeah.